Okay, um, The Vespers of Palermo by Felicia Hemmons. It's, um, it's like a happy ending play. It's a, it's called a tragedy in five acts, but I would honestly say that it's a happy ending for, like, absolutely everybody involved. Raymond gets to be a Byronic hero in that he, like, has this moral standard that nobody else does. He is, um, a little bit arrogant in that he, like, talks against his father, who he's just met, again, for the first time in his life. He thinks that he might be slightly forgiving for of, of his father's, uh, what he's up to. I mean, it is not cool, but then again, he has just met him again for the first time in his life, but he's, like, in his late teens, I want to say. Um, he is treated as an exile for part of the play, um, that is characteristic of this, um, hero role that he has. He's self-destructive and that he, uh, just seems to want to die in the end of the play, like, th his dad tries to, his dad, um, what's his name, Procida comes back and tries to free him and he says no, maybe it's like his moral code that's preventing him from running away from this, maybe it's something else entirely, um, and then he's, uh, released and it's found that and he leads this battle and it's found that um he wasn't a traitor he wasn't the heretic but um it's interesting that he carried like he just allowed them to call him a heretic because he kept saying something what does he keep saying like um I, he says something like i know that the um that the true measure will come or like like before i before i'm killed like someone will someone will come to reveal the truth and let's see what else he struggles a lot with uh, what his dad is doing um, the really cool moment where because Persida and Raymond are like really close right up until um, the um, the meeting the secret meeting that they're having and um somebody sort of says you know we shall we'll kill everyone like sort of sort of this like let's just kill everyone thing and uh Raymond stands up and goes but what of innocence or should should innocent and guilty uh perish together something like that and um one of the characters just stands up and says who speaks of innocence um and like no we just we have to kill everyone like that's the only way to solve this problem and um his dad Raymond's dad agrees agrees with uh with not him which causes a lot of problems for Raymond Procida agrees disagrees with what Raymond is saying so that causes a lot of problems in his life and it's interesting that he sort of just immediately disowns his father um who he's just met after not knowing him, so maybe that's why he doesn't care too much, but it seems like he should he should be willing to do a little bit more for his father, so his his moral code is like getting in the way of things, of his emotions in the play, so he seems to be sort of, I mean, maybe he isn't this kind of guy, because he's sort of unemotional in a lot of ways, I mean, he's really emotional with Constance, but... I've sort of expected that. He just seems, you know, really rational in his argument. He can't understand why uh, Persida and uh, the rest of the, the peasants feel the way that they do. And I think that, um, I think it might be because maybe he's young and he doesn't remember what happened. Um, he didn't necessarily experience it directly. So, but in the end, he dies like a hero's death, which is what he sort of wanted. Um, he's sort of raised up as king, a king, kind of. Like, they come to crown him and then find him dead. And his father doesn't have to renounce his son anymore. So, yeah, like, he died. And that sucks. But it's not a tragedy. Because in the end, everything was awesome. Like, everybody figured it out. 
nobody nobody was still confused not everybody is dead only one person is dead and like the opposing army and theoretically some soldiers but I don't know why it's called a tragedy in five acts I think that as my interpret interpretation I would say this is not a tragedy this is like I mean I guess it's classified as a tragedy because someone dies and there's no wedding but it it's it's not tragic it's heroic it's it 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 sort of reminds me of the hero tales from the Greeks like and I guess that's appropriate it's Sicilian like so I don't I just thought it was interesting that I guess what I wanted to focus on was Raymond's relationship with Procida and um and why it's called a tragedy, which I don't understand. And even, although there's that weird moment at the beginning where Raymond sort of tells Constance to go away. Um, I don't remember why that is, but then he, take, he takes her back, and then she's the one that finds him dead, so she gets to hold him also at the end. She gets to be with him again when he dies. So yeah, it's not a tragedy. That's what... That's what I'm going to say, as my interpretation of this play. It's incorrectly categorized as a tragedy because it's not tragic. It's heroic. And those aren't the same thing.